Hello and welcome to News Now. I'm your host, Taylor Inman. We're going over this week's biggest headlines and what's coming up for the Flathead Valley. Cabin fever days is quickly approaching. Where people of all ages sled down Sugar Hill and Martin City for the annual barstool races, taking on their chances of wiping out or finishing first. Organizer and racer Philly Steve Paul tells us what they're doing to prepare. But first, here are some headlines. Officials at the American Red Cross are reporting the lowest number of blood donors nationwide in 20 years, following a 7,000-unit shortfall in blood donations between Christmas and New Year's Day. Blood products are currently going to hospitals faster than blood donations are coming in, and in recent weeks, the Red Cross has had to limit the distribution of type O blood among the most transfused blood types, Red, Fro- Red Cross officials said in a press release. The Red Cross will be holding several blood drives in northwest Montana in the coming weeks. American Red Cross Regional Communications Director Matt Oshner said the organization provides blood supplies to Clark Fork Valley Hospital in Plains, St. Joseph Hospital in Polson, and St. Luke Community Healthcare in Ronan. This nationwide shortage is slightly more severe than others in recent memory, according to Oshner. Those interested in donating to the Red Cross can sign up at www.redcross.org by typing in their zip code. A full list of upcoming drives are listed on our website. Logan Health Senior Marketing Coordinator Chris Leopold said their healthcare system partners with Vitalant for its blood services. While their supply is not critically low at this time, he said there is always a need for additional donors. The hospital system goes through a lot of blood on a regular basis. Referring to statistics from the Logan Health Medical Center Laboratory in Kalispell, Leopold said blood components are used daily at the hospital. He said the facility stocks an inventory of about 160 red blood cell units, or RBC units, of various blood types and helps keep Logan Health affiliates on the high line stocked up. Leopold said Vitalin is hosting two upcoming blood drives at Logan Health in Kalispell and Whitefish. The first drive takes place on January 30th in the paint rush room at Logan Health Medical Center in Kalispell beginning at 8 a.m. The second drive will be at Logan Health Whitefish in the conference room beginning at 9 a.m. Anyone interested can sign up at vitalent.org or can reach out to Logan Health's Community Relations Coordinator, Lori Alsbury, at lalsbury at logan.org. Kalispell Public Schools was one of many districts around Montana this week to receive a threatening email about a bomb. Law enforcement in counties around the state determined it wasn't a credible threat, according to the Flathead County Sheriff's Office. Sheriff Brian Hino said the email didn't mention a specific school or district. He said law enforcement agencies around the state typically communicate with each other to monitor the situation when these widespread emails containing threats are sent to schools. He said the email echoes one sent to schools in December that also went to Glacier Park International Airport. Hino said the information is generic and may have been sent to schools in other states. Calspell Interim Superintendent Randy Klein sent out a notification about the emails to families around 10.30 p.m. on Tuesday. Klein said school officials and law enforcement do not deem the threats to be credible and the notification was a cautionary measure. He said in an email that they will continue to monitor the situation with local law enforcement and will work closely with them to verify the accuracy and authenticity of any reports they receive. Whitefish Community Foundation's Community Grant Program is accepting applications until February 15th at 5 p.m. Eligible nonprofits may apply for up to $10,000 for programs or projects benefiting residents of Flathead County or for health and human service programs benefiting residents of Lincoln and Glacier Counties. Applications must be submitted through Whitefish Community Foundation's online granting platform. Nonprofits that have never received a grant from Whitefish Community Foundation are encouraged to apply for a community grant to help the foundation become acquainted with their organization. Receiving a community grant is a stepping stone to being considered as a Great Fish Community Challenge participant. Organizations that plan to apply to participate in the 2024 Great Fish Community Challenge may apply for a community grant if they are requesting funds to support a capital project not funded by the challenge or if they have have identified a new and significant need. Whitefish Community Foundation will host an optional workshop to assist nonprofits with the application process. An online workshop will be held Tuesday, January 30th from noon to 1 p.m. To register, call the foundation at 406-863-1781 or email contact at whitefishcommunityfoundation.org. Cabin Fever Days raises money for the Hungry Horse and Martin City Fire Departments as well as the Canyon Quick Response Unit. The usually sleepy town of Martin City is filled with people vying to get close to Sugar Hill to see what barstool racers have come up with. Philly Steve Paul has done a little bit of everything at the event. He's an organizer, a racer, and has been the announcer for the Barstool Races. All right, Philly Steve, thanks for joining me. 
Okay, it's nice to be here. Yeah. So you've been a Cabin Fever Days vet for a while, but how long have you been involved? Well, actually, I've probably had an active role in Cabin Fever for 10 years. Uh, we moved here 10, uh, 15 years ago and uh, started racing a couple, couple uh, years after we moved here. And then I looked at the, root, at the whole organization and I said, this is something I can embrace. And so uh, I've become a part. I'm an advisor mostly. I'm not a, you know, I'm not a member of the, of the board, but I'm an advisor. So I go and I, I bring ideas to the board and uh, I come up with some ideas you know, that, that could make it better and, uh, and things that uh, we need to be careful about doing. And so, yeah, that's, that's what I do pretty much. Uh, and I am I'm racing. Uh, I have raced yet last year, this year. I don't know if I'm going to go again. I'm turning 70 uh, on uh, February 10th, which is the date of Cabin Fever Days. So um, it's I'm going to it's going to be uh, a daytime decision uh, that whether I uh, race this year or not. Uh, I'm also the announcer on the top of the hill, and I have a new assistant this year. Uh, Kathleen Foley Helton will be assisting me this year. And uh, so we try to get a, a good um, introduction of all the racers that come in. They come from uh, as far as uh, Canada, uh, North Dakota. Uh, people come from all over to race there. And uh, we give a little bio on them as they uh, prepare to go down the hill. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like uh, <coughs> similar to like um, uh, what we call it um, uh, ski jumping. Like oh, when you yeah. see the ski jumpers, they go down there and they always say, this one's from Norway and He's been a gold medalist, and away he goes. And you know, man is, was never meant to fly, but that's as that's as close <laughs> as they come. Yeah. So our event is similar to that, but we do it's a uh, it's a um, um, a two person race. So the winner of the race is sometimes the one who 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 fell didn't fall the most. You know, if it's, if you fall down when you're going down the hill, it's it's because you're on a, a bar stool sled. And it's, it's possible that you could go down. So, but then you get up and you push yourself and the other person could fall too. So you're never out of it until somebody crosses the finish line. Okay. So, and it's, it's double elimination up until the very end. And uh, so that's how, how the race has gone. And we announce them as they go down the hill. Mm -hmm. uh, this year it's going to be one day. It's just uh, this, the, the Saturday, February 10th. Mm -hmm. A lot of activities going on. There's a lot of vendors there. There's a... Uh, it's, a, it's an event that, uh, that really uh, represents the canyon uh, the way we, w we want to be represented. You know, we've we got the barstool races, which is, which is kind of an edgy kind of a sport, but it is a uh, competitive sport, and uh, we, we, do, uh, we do enjoy it. We embrace it. Uh, we, we will run for the world championship because there really isn't any other. I think there's one place out in Missouri somewhere or Minnesota that they do a version of barstool racing, but we, we pretty much have it a lock on it that if you win our race, uh, you are a world champion. Oh, cool! I didn't know that at all. Uh, that is that is that's until somebody comes up and proves differently to me. Uh -huh. uh, that's the way we're going to represent it. Yeah. And, uh, so yeah. Oh, cool. Um, so and I love Cabin Fever Days. It's one of my favorite events every year. Um, how has it changed since you started participating? Decade. Yeah, well, it hasn't changed that much. It's gotten a lot more popular. Uh, mm -hmm. There are, you know, people, you know, hear about it and they come in, in, in large numbers. And uh, depending on the weather, uh, we've had uh, some days where the weather, weather's been just spectacular. And that's when the most people come out. Mm -hmm. uh, other days, it's been zero degrees with the wind blowing. And we don't get a big crowd on that. So you can never really tell. Uh, but it hasn't really changed much. Uh, we used to run it two days. We had the, the practice run the day before, and, and then it was uh, the actual finals were run on Sunday. But then, I mean, the truth be told, they uh, uh, changed the Super Bowl from oh, okay. the week before Cabin Fever Days because they added an extra game in the NFL. So now the Super Bowl is on Sunday. So uh, for a while, I was advocating, well, well let's, let's go up against the Super Bowl because we're both – going to be determining a world champion yeah. <laughs> i mean it's right? it's the fact of the matter is yeah. and you know and so uh but that i was you know uh, i came to believe that it was not a good idea to go up against the super bowl because there were a lot of different reasons so we run it just on saturday we get the whole thing in on one day so uh 
and then the, the next day is Super Bowl. I, I saw that there are also kids races, and I guess I didn't know that. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, oh, this year we're going to have a lot of kids' events. Oh, I mean, cool. Yeah, they're going to – here we're going to have a clown that's going around, you know, time balloons and things like that. And they do uh, sledding on the bottom part of the hill. So uh, – and we also announced the sledding you know, just to prepare mm-hmm. all the kids for, you know, what's going to happen when they get older. <laughs> but uh, – so, yeah, there, we're going to be doing that in different age groups, and there's some prizes for the kids when, when they do that, and a lot of activities for the kids. So it's, uh, that's, that's something that uh, has changed a little bit uh, recently, and uh, we're going we're gonna to see how that turns out. And I'm, I'm optimistic that the kids will have a good time. I mean, there's a lot of people there, and it's, it's just uh, it's a fun event for sure. Yeah. Are you guys still doing the, uh, the like the arm wrestling competitions and all that at the bars? Yeah, all the bars have their schedule of events that they're in. You know, they um, some uh, the Stonefly has three bands playing okay. on Saturday, and Packers has a band. I think the Dewdrop. You know, all the mm-hmm. iconic bars up there will have a lot of uh, activities, and all day on Saturday we'll have a shuttle running, and it's a free shuttle. Mm-hmm. So you can, if you're at the barstool races, you want to take off and go. Uh, Go up to the Dewdrop. Um, I, I think it. We still pick up. I think down at the Dam Town, even though that bar is not open anymore. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, the, and that's. I always make sure, uh, even though I'm an older guy, I still like to run on the shuttle. I just like the the uh, the camaraderie of everybody. You know, mm-hmm. it's a it's a jovial mood. It's a it's a fun time to, to ride that shuttle, and I make sure uh, on uh, Saturday I run it till. Till it stops. Yeah. Lots of creative bar stools at the races. Can you remember some of your favorite from years past? Well, you know, of course, the, the iconic favorite is the is the band. Oh, that yeah. They play on it. They have bar stools, uh, uh, skis on their platform, and they go down the hill, and, and uh, it really isn't official until they play Born to be Wild. <laughs> And they go down and they shoot off the pyro. You know, they, it's just a, a hoot to watch them go down. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, the band is is probably the most important. Uh, you know, there's a uh, the black black widow is I believe that's what they call it. The black widow uh, is the most prolific winner in the uh, open class. Uh, they're an open class, so it's kind of like a, a low bobsled uh, mm-hmm. that can be entered, and and that's you know. People who we're, we're trying to appeal for more racers this year, too. We're, we're having off to a slow start. So we're trying to get uh, more racers. And that open class is, is easy. It's just anything on skis that you can sit in and go down the hill. I mean, they're steerable, similar to a bobsled. So um, the traditional bar stool sled, which is I, I, that's the category that I compete in. Uh, I don't really compete because I'm. I just like to go down without crashing. Yeah, that's all I'm trying to do. Uh, but the uh, so the, um, the the bars there there are a requirement. They have to be certain height, certain width of skis, certain length. All those things are required, and they're measured before they go in. So you you only can race against the same ones. Open class is is different. So anybody can pretty much do anything they want. And then there's show class, which would be the. Uh, like the band would come down in that. Oh, okay. We've had different, you know, they, they come down in boats. They, they, they come down in barrels. I mean, there, there are so many different ways of doing Anything you can concoct to fit on a, a pair of skis, you can do that uh, and come down in open class. I think I saw a spaceship last year. Spaceships, yeah, <laughs> they're big. Yeah, they're big. You know, they, they don't really get into space, but they kind of no. they kind of close. Lower space, I think. Yeah. <laughs> So they had a hard time making it down the hill, too. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes that happens. Um, so as a Martin City resident, um, you know, this event um, is a fundraiser for the fire department in Martin City and the Hungry Horse Fire Department, as well as the Canyon Response Unit. First responders, right. Yeah. Um, what does this event mean to you? Well, I, I, it's, it's a way to uh, uh, generate funds for, uh, for people who... When, when you had the, uh, the fires that we had there this, um, this summer, uh, you can see how the commitment for the, the response to the fires and things like that. And knowing that money can be developed in, in a fun event to, uh, to help uh, you know, buy the, the, the fire, the packs that they wear and the boots and the axes they use and things like that. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and also, you know, it's just a, a way that, that, that we have to, to, uh, to you know, give back to the community for all the, you know, services that they offer us. And, and we really appreciate them. And, uh, and, it's, it's, and they appreciate us, too. So it's a, one of those reciprocal things that is, is really kind of a, a good way. It's kind of the way we should live. Mm-hmm. We, should, we, should, we like to have fun. But we, if we can raise money at the same time, that can go to the to causes that, that help help us. Mm-hmm. Uh, self, selflessly, they selflessly is the word I think <laughs> that they they give of of their time, right. and when we can give a little back to them, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, let's see here. Um, okay, so if someone's preparing to race, uh, what advice do you have? Well, the most famous advice was given by Mike Murray, who was world champion for four years, uh, is don't overthink it. You know, the hill looks pretty pretty hard and pretty steep, and it is, but you just don't overthink it. You get yourself in a position where, you're, where you've got your skis going down. If you, if you turn and you go into the bank, just hop right back on again because the other guy could go down. And uh, that's, that's the thing is it's persistence. I think is one of the most uh, persistence is omnipotent. Uh, mm-hmm. One of the most important things in your life is to be, you know, if you get knocked down, you know, brush yourself off, you start up again. I think that that works in barstool racing for sure. Because anybody who's just starting to do it, uh, they're going to fall. Uh, mm-hmm. Really, I I was skiing barstool racing for six years before I actually could make it all the way down without falling. That is true. Uh, and it's, you know, it's a thing that you, you have to be, be able to be flexible. Yeah. Um, but, uh, and then, you know, don't worry about the, uh, the cold because it's, it, it'll be cold a lot of times and you just kind of keep yourself loose and, you know, you know, don't drink too much, you know, you don't, you don't, <laughs> you don't do advice. that, you know, cause you can get a beer or two in you when you're on the top of the hill, but, uh, you want to, you want to make sure you're, you're kind of, uh, uh, uh cognitive. So, yeah, that's about as much advice. I, you know, have fun. Yeah, yeah and, so and, much fun. Yeah. Um, so you have a song written about Cabin Fever Days, is that right? Uh, I've written many songs about Cabin Fever Days. And, uh, and we actually uh, compete uh, in the parades that they have in, uh, in uh, Columbia Falls and Whitefish Winter Carnival Parade, which is the week before uh, Cabin Fever Days. And uh, over the years, we've had a, a float in there, and we've always kind of gone down, giving out candy and, and things like that. And um, when I, I decided, I, I, you know, well, they, they said, we need somebody to take over the float. And I said, well, it sounds like something I can do. And uh, so I did it, and then I started uh, thinking about, you know, what I was going to, uh, how I was going to do it. And I, uh, I play guitar, and I have a friend uh, who plays uh, Bob uh, Clobber, Big Bobby Clobber, uh, um, Padgham, and he's my partner, and he's my rock. He's solid, and we go down, and we sit, regardless of the weather, you know, the night of lights is at night and everything, and it gets cold. That's why, so my songwriting has come uh, based on, on the love of the, of the Barstool races, and, and several years ago, uh, with, again, I'll mention Mike Murray again, uh, he, he just was impressive, and I, I decided I was going to make a movie about him. There's a lot of songs in there, and, and we do those on the parade. We do those original songs, all that have to do with the barstool races, and a lot are in the movie. So the movie's called Flat Lying. Okay. So because that's, that's his, what he does is he gets in a position where he's laying back like this, and his feet are going straight, and he, is, he steers like this, and he, he was, he's really good at it. Oh, almost like a luge? Like a luge, yeah, yeah. but you got to consider you're up about – you know, what is it, 28 inches, I think is how high this, the stool has to be. So basically, oh, you got on a stool. <laughs> he's on a bar stool, and he's, he's, it's a sight to see. And uh, so the movie, you know, we, uh, I don't know if we'll play it this year. We've, we usually play it at Stonefly mm-hmm. uh, the, the night before. So I don't know if we'll do it this year, but uh, it, it has been shown, and, and uh, I, I can show it at my house. So I've done that a couple times too. Billy Steve said the event needs racers and volunteers to help set up. Anyone interested can find sign-up and contact information at cabinfeverdays.com. 
Now Philly Steve's going to sing just a little bit of that Cabin Fever Day song for us. Well, I had an old cabin fever. Yeah, I had it real bad. It was the worst cabin fever that I ever had. So I built me a bar stool sled and rode it down the hill. You might say I'm a knucklehead, but damn, I love that thrill. I love skiing through, but I'm careful about crashing. All I'm trying to do is get down without crashing. Get hauled back up, do it over again. Cold beer in my cup, I'm going to chug it. At the end, that old cabin fever, now them blues be gone. I'm a transformed re-believer, ready to carry on. Sitting here, waiting for spring with arms open wide. Dusting off my front porch swing, I ain't staying inside anymore. I'm gonna go out bar stool racing. Yee Martin City. Fancy people, we are not. Yee Martin City. We're just glad to have a pot. Yee Martin City. Cause this little town is all that we got. This little town, town of about 250 people, balloons up to 300 in the summertime. This little town is all that we got. That's all I got. Thank you. Come to the Barstool Races. February 10th. February 10th. Looking for a fun way to get out and connect with the community? Remember, you can find art classes, live music, and anything community-related by going to dailyinterlake.com events and checking out our events calendar. The Glacier Queer Alliance will be hosting a Renaissance Masquerade Ball on January 20th, starting at 8 p.m. There will be dancing, raffle prizes, and more. Admission is 18 and older. On January 22nd, Glacier National Park Superintendent Dave Romer will be giving a State of the Park address at the Northwest Montana History Museum starting at 7 p.m. And on January 25th, world-famous mountaineer Peter Hillary will be speaking at the Wachholz College Center. Like his father, the late Sir Edmund Hillary, who made the first ascent of Mount Everest in, Mount Everest in 1953, Peter is a world-class explorer, making 50 mountaineering expeditions, among many others. The show starts at 7.30 p.m. Thanks for joining us. News Now is a podcast from the Daily Interlake. We're proud to be the largest independent newsroom in Montana and the oldest paper in the Valley. Consider becoming a subscriber to support our work. Call Circulation at 406-755-7018 or go to the Subscribe tab in the top right corner of our website. And if you haven't already, subscribe to our YouTube channel to never miss an episode of The Pod. Everybody stay safe and have a great week. And enjoy all the snow. <laughs>